Bracelets, earrings, and necklaces. Yeah, she's gonna be there. I know you like this stuff, but she's making her, her son is helping her make it. Sure. It's really fun. I thought I'd let you know. Good morning. Good morning. 
Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. We are in the season of Advent when we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ, the coming of Jesus' birth, right? Today we're going to continue our sermon series talking about who this child born in Bethlehem will be, all right? Uh, start off by singing a song, a Christmas song. Let's stand and join together. It'll come all you faithful. Blessings on your worship this morning. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Invite forward the children for a special night. <coughs> Just Brad is always No. No, they're not the <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you guys today? Yeah. So, guess what's coming up? Christmas. No, oh, yeah. How do you know Christmas is coming up? Yeah, Brad. On December is on Christmas. Oh, so, oh, okay. Because of the calendar, you know, not not the Christmas tree. Oh yeah, the Christmas tree. Now, what happened on Christmas? What are we celebrating on Christmas? Yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Jesus' birthday. Where, where was he born? In a hospital? No. No. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Where was he born? 
Where was he born, Melody? In Bethlehem. And so the candle we're going to light today is the Bethlehem candle. Last week, we lit the prophecy candle that God would prophesy what was going to happen. He tells us the truth. Right? And now we're going to talk about the Bethlehem candle, or we're going to light the Bethlehem candle. It reminds us that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, just as God <coughs> promised that he would. All right? So, we're reminded that God always keeps his promises, the prophecy candle. We're reminded that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. We are saved, right? All right, so, last week, I think it was Jubilee, right? You lit the candle, not Melody. It wasn't Melody last time. So, this time, which two of you, I want one of you to light the prophecy candle. So, Annabelle, you want to light the prophecy candle? One in the front and on the left. All right, front and left. Right, left. And there we go. The prophecy candle that tells us that God always keeps His promises to us. Who wants to me? And who wants to light the Bethlehem candle? Me. Uh, get in. Go ahead. Get in. Be careful. Don't start your hair on fire. Because we're reminded that Jesus was born where? Where was Jesus born? Yeah. All right, thank you very much. You guys can go have a seat. All right, thank you for lighting the candle. second candle is called the Bethlehem candle. It is to remind us that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth and was born as a baby in Bethlehem. In the Old Testament book of Micah, it was prophesied that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. To keep this promise, God caused people and events to follow his plans throughout history. When God determined the time was right for the Savior to be born, the emperor decided that, in, that a counting of the people should take place. The emperor did not know that his decision was actually an essential part of God's master plan. We read responsibly. We light two Advent candles remembering Jesus who came in history. He came into a world of sin and death. We remember Jesus who came as the promised Messiah. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord. We hear his call to repent. We light two Advent candles as a sign of our repentance and desire for renewal. Through your word and spirit, may our souls be blessed. We join together in prayer. We thank, thank you, dear Savior, for coming, for coming to earth as a little baby. Help, Help us to always remember the reason why you came. And let us praise you forever for taking away our sins and for promising we will be with you in heaven. Amen. God invites us to confess our sins, come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. 
for I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our <laughs> Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in the verses. Christmas, the events of that first Christmas. And last time we read about the promise of John the Baptist, where Zechariah was serving in the temple and God took away his ability to speak because he doubted God. God was promising that he was going to send John the Baptist into the world to prepare for the Christmas. <coughs> Today we read about the angel appearing to Mary and promising Jesus, our Savior. Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, so six months later, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was sent to was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. For she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson kind of reflects what we're going to talk about in our sermon today. Uh, the fact that our God does not operate in the same way that the rest of the world does. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. 
Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, and the things that are, are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are going to switch up and sing a little bit different song instead of the one that you know. We're going to sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's stand and join together. It's on, it's on the screen. <laughs> Thanks for today, for my brothers and sisters who are here, for the promise of a Savior, for the home that you won for us in heaven, for, for the opportunity to celebrate your birth. Today, Lord God, help us to see things through your eyes, to understand our lives and our world the way that you do, Lord God. Give us your spirit and give us your insight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My brothers, my sister, the manger scene is wonderful, isn't it? I got, I got this thing up there, right? Isn't that fun? It's so wonderful. You know, we got the dark blue. It's so calming, right? You got this. Nice young family just starting off together, going on their first trip together, right? It's so wonderful. Young married couple, right? Starting their lives together. And they're going back home to their hometown, probably going to visit some relatives, some old friends, right? And yeah, there's no place in the inn, but what a great, what a great account. Ends up having the baby with. Right? So, and you know, and then... Mary's always dressed so nice, you know, and Joseph is kind of stately with his big beard, and, you know, and you got the shepherds who come and they marvel. What a story, right? Account, truth, right? Of the shepherds coming and 
worshiping the Savior and going to tell the angels sing, right? Glory to God in the highest and on earth. But I wonder, I wonder if we miss something, if that's all that we see. The simplicity and the mystical, magical, humble, wonderful, peaceful thing. Because that little baby who's laying there in a manger, who's helpless and crying and wiggling and weak, is the mighty God. The mighty God. Every time I say that line when I was preparing for this, a chill would run up and down my spine, and I think that that's right. The baby born in Bethlehem, this baby, small, is the almighty God who is over all and in all and through all. This is the one who is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and all authority has been given to him. And he lays in a manger as a helpless human child. <coughs> the Almighty God gave up his throne, his power, his authority in heaven to come down to this earth to save us and rescue us from ourselves. To take away our sins. To make a home for us in heaven. <clears throat> the Almighty God hidden in the form of a weak human child. We've been preparing ourselves for the coming of Jesus for his birth by looking at a verse from Isaiah chapter 9 where Isaiah prophesies about the coming Savior and he would be called and he says, and he will be called and wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Talked about last time, he is a wonderful counselor. His word, his guidance, his counsel for us in his word each and every day is something that is beyond anything else. Wonderful counsel. Today we're going to talk about the fact that he is mighty God. And mighty, not just that he's stronger than most of us, but mighty that he is almighty. That there is nothing that he cannot do and nothing that is beyond him and no enemy that can come against us that will ever win. There's no problem that he cannot solve. There is no uh, chasm that he cannot overcome. He is almighty. But the way in which he uses his mighty power and the way in which the almighty God operates is not the way that the rest of the world does. I remember as a boy, we'd be, all of a sudden, the, the police would, this is in Zambia, right? The police would come flying down the road, right? And everybody had to get off the road because they're clearing the way for President Kenneth Kaunda, right? And down he would come, and you never saw nice, fancy cars there because the roads were kind of lousy. As soon as you got off the main roads, it was pretty sketchy, right? But here, here would come three or four big, long, black Cars. I think they're the Russian Lottas, right? And so the big old limousines would come through and all these policemen with these with the motorcycles and everything and out of one window there would be a hand with a handkerchief. You know, the window's only open that far and all you saw was a hand. It was never his hand. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You, you thought it was. He'd be, right, and the, everyone would clear the way and there'd be this big processional every time Kenneth Kaunda came through. That's what we expect from someone who have who is of influence and power and authority, right? They come into town and everyone goes, ooh, right? You bring out the best food, all the dignitaries come and greet them, there's this big show, everything else like that, right? Everyone's all wound up because the new coach of CU is gonna be yes. prime time. Oh, oh. And I, you were debating on the radio whether or not he's gonna be the most famous person to live in Colorado. Now you have the mighty God who comes to earth where? In the town of Bethlehem. Which you and I go, ooh, Bethlehem. But Bethlehem was a nothing little town in the middle of nowhere. It was, he was born not to power and influence and 
and recognition and wealth. He was born to poverty. He was born not as a superhero, but as a baby, a human baby, a mighty God, couched and hidden in the form of a frail human child. God does not operate in the way that the rest of the world does. Right. They look like it. But sometimes we expect them to. Right? And sometimes we want their lives to reflect the, the, the way in which our world operates. Here we are, we're children of God, we're his followers, and we say, okay, we are followers of the mighty God, and so God, we expect that he is going to somehow, in some way, uh, present himself in our lives in a way that is flashy and showy and glitzy and powerful and wonderful. That is not always true, is it? I want God to heal me miraculously, instantly. And God uses time. And medicine. I want God, the Holy Spirit, to zap me with his almighty power and make me a super Christian and make my faith strong. And God chooses the slow process of studying his word and growing in prayer. I want God to provide for me by helping me win the lottery. And God provides for us day after day by going to work. God operates in a way that is very different from the way that the world does. God operates using the weak, using the small, using the insignificant, using the overlooked for the sake of his kingdom, for the sake of his glory. And sometimes in our lives as Christians, we want God to come down and zap us and use his almighty power and show off and glitz and miracles and, and he might. But usually God tends to operate using the small and the insignificant. And the problem is that too often we miss it. We were going through Miguel Antonio National Park in Costa Rica, right? And like we usually do, we didn't hire a guide because we're cheap and because we wanted to do it ourselves. And we're going along, and here's all these guys pulling down the plants of the bird of paradise flower. All right? And they're pointing to all the people down inside, the leaves down in there, like, what in the world are they looking at? So, of course, what I have to do? I go over, pull down the plant, look inside, and there, in each of the leaves, there's some water in there, and there's a little red and yellow crab. Tiny little red and yellow crab. Miguel Antonio, we saw sloths, and we saw monkeys, and we saw Florimundi, and we saw all kinds of cool things. But the thing that I remember the best was a little crab that lived its whole life in the little water that was gathered in the leaves of the bird of paradise flower. What is the little red crab in the water of the leaf of the bird of paradise flower in your life? What are the little things where God shows you his love and his power and his love? The things that we so quickly dismiss, the things that we don't really recognize as the power of the mighty God at work in our hearts and lives. To stop and think about your Christmas. To think about the time that you spend family that you are with, the good things that have happened to you, and you dismiss them because they're ordinary. We expect God to provide for us or do things for us or be spectacular in our lives, and so often God shows his power and his love and his presence, not in the spectacular, not in the outstanding, but in the everyday little things. Think about the body. Who did Jesus choose to be his disciples? The high priest. The wisest people around. Peter 
was this close to being illiterate. You read the epistles of Peter and his grammar is horrible. They were what? Fishermen. These are not the powerful. These are not the mighty. These are not the wealthy. The closest one to having any sort of influence in those days was John because he knew the high priest. That's the closest one. Think about Elijah when he was having a rough day and there was all of these and he was feeling down about his ministry, down about himself, and God was going to appear to him, and there's this earthquake, and there's a storm, and yet God appeared to him as what? The whisper of the still, small voice. And God uses the small. God appears to us in the small. God blesses us in the small. The mighty God in the form of a little baby born in Bethlehem. And too often in our lives, we sit and we want God to somehow be spectacular. And if we do that, we do not understand who our God is. And we are missing out on so many of the blessings that God has given to us. The joke is told, I'm sure you've heard it before, Man is on the top of his house. The water, flood waters are rising, right? And he prays to the Lord God, Lord God, rescue me from this flood. And the man shows up in a canoe and says, hop in the canoe, I'll rescue you. He says, no, no, God is going to rescue me. And a little while later, a man in a motorboat comes up and says, hop in, I'll help you. He says, no, no, God is going to rescue me. And a helicopter comes, and they drop the ladder down. And they said, no, 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 God is going to rescue me. And he drowns. And he gets to heaven, and he says, God, how come you didn't rescue me? He said, I sent the canoe, I sent the boat, I sent a helicopter. <laughs> we laugh. But what are the blessings of God? What are the good things that God has done in your life? Where do you see God working in your life this Christmas? Is it in the big and flashy? Or is it in the simple smile of your brothers and sisters in Christ who love you? Is it in, is it, is it in all the things that you don't have? All of the big things that your neighbor has? Or is it the things that God has given you? Is it, in, is it in the fact that God puts food on your table and clothes on your back and a roof over your head? Isn't it found in the cross that stained with blood? The forgiveness of our sins and the love of the Almighty God? Isn't it in the family that God has given to us? In the position that God has given to us, and the blessings that we do have, or are we looking for it somewhere else? Maybe this Christmas you look at the little baby lying in a manger, tiny and small and seemingly helpless, and you see the mighty God. We learn to look at our lives not in the eyes of the world that needs wits, that needs power, that needs influence, that needs lots of likes and follows, but in the simple blessings that God has showered on us each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. The mighty God and the little child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in our next hymn. It is What Child Is This? Please stand.
Oh, I missed a paragraph. I won't preach the whole paragraph. <laughs> You're all like, thank goodness. <laughs> but even in the way that we view the way God is using us in our lives, sometimes yeah. we, we sit and we feel that God could use us for so much more. A lot of times that flows from, from looking at things through the eyes of the world and not through the eyes of God. God, whatever God has laid in front of me, that is what is, that is for me to do. That is a reason for me to have joy and thanksgiving for that. And see God using me for that, rather than griping because he didn't use me for this. You, you understand what I'm saying by that? All right, enough of that. Uh, prayer request for today, we have a couple already. Um, Stephanie Cook has COVID, so we'll pray for her. Our sister Jay is homesick. She's not doing well with her stomach. Um, Angel, this is a family friend of uh, Wayne. Uh, three years free of cancer, so we give thanks to God for that. Right? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, a couple of birthdays. Sarah Whitney, uh, Carolyn Butcher, Tracy Sanders, and Kayla Clark. Was here. And, oh, she's in the back. Their birthdays are today. And Rod and Lorraine Castro's anniversary is this week as well. Any other prayer requests today? Yes. Nicole. Um, Jeff's mom, that I, you just, I'd like a prayer for her for her to get out of rehab, the rehab center, maybe by Christmas if possible. Okay. We'll pray for Jeff's mom. Yes. <clears throat> My neighbor, Nicole, uh, just got over science of bugs and now has COVID. Emma. So one of my is from Weisel. Mm -hmm. She moved to Valor seven weeks. And and the May and Okay, so we're gonna pray for peace at work, right? Yeah. Oh yes. Um prayer of thanks that the ladies had a great time and the men had a great time last night. Yeah. <laughs> Other prayer requests? Anything online? Yep. Right. You haven't had any for a while. So, Paul and Julie Larson. Um, I don't really understand what we're praying for, but uh, God will know. So, is it her implant? I think so. Oh, that's a problem? All right. Okay. All right. So Julie Larson is, or Julie, this is Paul's wife, is having trouble with her, with her hearing, her cochlear implant. So we'll pray for that. Anything else? Yes, sir. Can you pray for all the students at Prairie View High School? There was an incident this week. And just um, just pray for all of them. Yeah. Um, would it help me to understand what it was or not really? There, the people with guns coming to the school, the people with guns come to the big shooting, they called them up. Yeah. <coughs> so we're praying for safety, thanksgiving for safety, and continued safety. Okay, let's stand and join together in prayer. Yes, sir. <coughs> our heads and we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all that you do, especially give you thanks for sending your Son to be our Savior. <clears throat> Forgive us for the times, Lord God, that we have not understood you or your ways. We have not understood uh, how you operate. Thank you for calling us into your family. Use us, Lord God, for the sake of your kingdom and help us in our lives to see you at work in the simple and in the everyday Forgive us for the times, Lord God, that we have looked at things through the eyes of the world. Give us your eyes, Lord God, to see our lives, to see how blessed we are. We come to you with some special prayers, and we pray, Lord God, for safety. Watch over, Lord God. Send your angels to guard, to protect. Take away those who would do harm, Lord God. Protect our brothers and sisters, our family and our friends, our community. Pray, Lord God, that you would not let there be any avalanches, and if there are, that no one would get hurt. Pray, Lord God and give you thanks for sparing the, the students at Prairie View High School and the teachers. 
Thank you for sparing them that danger. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to watch over them and protect them and keep them from harm, Lord God. Um, we know that every day is a gift from you. Teach us, Lord God, to value every day as a gift of your grace. <coughs> we pray also for safety and protection for our sister Emma. We pray, Lord God, that you would bring peace to her work. Um, the division, the troubles, the hardship at work, Lord God, with her supervisor. Pray, Lord God, that you would bring uh, a good resolution to that, Lord God. Um, pray that you would build Emma up, help her to know that she is loved by you, and that you will watch over her and protect her. We come to you on behalf of all those who are struggling with health issues, and we pray, Lord God, that you would bless and that you would heal, that you would comfort, that you would strengthen, that you would give faith to endure. We think of Stephanie and Nicole who are suffering from COVID, Lord God. Be with them and heal them. Our sister Jay, who is homesick with, with stomach issues, be with her as well. <clears throat> Jeff's mom, Lord God, we pray that you would strengthen her and heal her, Lord God, and allow her to come home uh, for the holiday for Christmas, Lord God. Be with Jeff's mom and strengthen her. Um, all those who are sick and suffering, Lord God, we commit to your care and ask for your blessing on them. We give you thanks, Lord God, for Angel, for the, for the free of cancer uh, diagnosis or news that she got, Lord God. We thank you for that. We know, Lord God, that it was you at work. Fill Angel's heart with thanksgiving and joy at the blessings that you have given. Um, we pray, Lord God, for, for our sister Julie. We pray, Lord God, that you would help her to overcome the struggles that she's having with her cochlear implant guide them and lead them in a positive direction and pray lord god that you would grant a solution to the to the issue we come to you lord god and give you thanks for last night and all the blessings that you showered on us it was a wonderful time thank you for those who put in their time and put in their effort pray lord god that you were glorified and that we were built up through everything we give you thanks also lord god for the years of life that you have given to kayla and tracy carolyn and sarah Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them this new year. Uh, fill their hearts with joy and thanksgiving at the blessings that you shower on them. Uh, humble them, Lord God, and build them up in you. Pray that they would find their strength in your promises. Lord. Finally, we give you thanks for the years of marriage that you have given to Rod and Lorraine. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them and strengthen their marriage, Lord God. Help them to love as you love. Help them to be committed as you are committed. Help them to be one as you are one. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please. Follow along with the worship congregation is singing. We'll sing the response. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ to him, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins do this whenever you drink it Peace of the Lord be with you always. to receive Christ's body. body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. May our life keep you pure. Your sins are forgiven.
stand and join together in a song. have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live at harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord look on you with his favor. Close with our last song. 
just take a moment to greet the people around you. Good morning, people around you. back cover of the program just a couple of things to point out thank you to everyone who helped out with advent by candlelight and advent by firelight especially to, to Al Hooks and Erica Boucher who coordinated this few efforts I think there was about 22 25 ladies here and then there was about a dozen of us gentlemen over at the Hooks house and it was it was a good good way to, to gathered together as brothers and sisters, right? Um, this Saturday, we are hosting a big community event. It is our annual craft fair. Um, and Miss Carol Bilo, you want to raise your hand? That lady right there is the one who coordinates it. She is the craftiest person in this congregation, I think. I'm not sure. You don't think so? Well, she's very crafty. Um, and uh, she needs a little bit of help the day of. And you want to elaborate anything that you really need help on the day of? So if you can come for an hour or two during the day just to help out, please speak with Carol. I just want to have a few people around. Also, the big one for me is at 3 o'clock, the craft show ends, and this room needs to be set up again. So if you are able to come at 3 o'clock to help out, um, usually it takes us 45 minutes to an hour. Um, love as much help as we can get because we this room gets emptied. Emptied, right? And we have to bring it all back in again. So if you're able to come and help out at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, that would be awesome. Um, otherwise, you can look at Cookie Walk is coming up. So the way that this works, I didn't know what this was, but it was described to me. It's very complicated. You bring a dozen cookies and you leave them. And then you take a dozen cookies home. And so you can pick two from here and three from there, but you can only take 12. That's where it gets complicated. <laughs> you have to know how to count to 12. And if you eat one while you're taking them, that counts. <laughs> so, no. yes. <laughs> um, it is on Sunday the 18th, so we'll do it right after church. Uh, cookie exchange, no. Cookie walk right after church on the 18th. Couples Club is coming Sunday right here. Uh, you want to say anything about that, Miss Lori? Oh, just um, even if you haven't joined us in the past, please, if you're a couple, come and join us this time. We're just going to have some snacks and some games here. All right. We'd love to have you come 5 o'clock next Sunday evening. Offering envelopes. If you use offering envelopes or if you would like to use offering envelopes, I know fewer and fewer people are, but if you would like that, there's a sign-up sheet on the board and back. Please write your name on there so that we get the correct number of them. We do have to pay for them, so that's why we're asking. So if you would like to use them, please do so. We want you to use them. All right, so just write your name up there, okay? So we know how many boxes to get. Am I saying that right, Miss Judy? All right, good. All right. She didn't say yes. She just said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she said yes. I heard that. Yes. But I also say if you're interested in not doing envelopes and paying online and automating that, you can talk to me or Laura uh, or Pastor. People can help with that if you're interested in not doing that. Maybe don't talk to him. There are instructions online if you'd like to see that. Um, Christmas invitations, Wednesday evening, 6.30 p.m. We're going to be writing handwritten invitations to our community, everyone who's moved into our community in the last six months or so. Love to have you come. We're going to have a little bit of pizza so that you have some food and stuff like that. So love to have you join us for that. Also, uh, Thursday morning at McBible Study. That's where that's called that because we have Bible Study at McDonald's. McBible study, we're going to be putting together the invitations for the craft fair. If you'd like to help out with either one of those, you're, you're welcome to do so. Um, I think that's all the announcements. Uh, Christmas Eve, our children are working hard to put on a pageant for us of the first Christmas. Um, there's going to be angels, and there's going to be shepherds, and everything like that. It's a great opportunity to invite family, friends, neighbors, co-workers to church with you, okay? So either you can take the insert that's in the program, or I have some of these invitations printed in the back. Take one, two, five, whatever, and invite some people to join us Christmas Eve night. I don't remember the time now. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve night. Love to have you join us and invite your family, friends, neighbors. Uh, see your children or our children be camels and donkeys. There's no camels? <laughs> Sunday school, Bible class to follow. I think the Sunday school will be in here, right? Sunday school's in here? Yes, yeah. Sunday school's in here. Bible class is in the cafeteria. All right? All right, let's close then with our last song. The Lord's blessings on your week. Note about this last song. This was not written. I think it's Isaac Watt who wrote it. This was not written to celebrate Christmas. This was written to celebrate Jesus coming as mighty God at the end of time on the last day on Judgment Day. We always sing it for Christmas. But this is really a song about Jesus coming in his power and authority on the last day. Let's stand and join together and enjoy the day.